Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. John this morning. We're clapping. It's good. Uh, Today is the 15th Sunday after Trinity. We hear about the birds and the lilies. Most of us are here. Some of us are actually over at school preparing for our church picnic, which is after Bible class and Sunday school today. Um, A little note on that. Uh, We're going to shorten Bible class Sunday school a little bit, hopefully. I say that, but I'm not very good at that, right? Okay, 45 minutes is the plan. Uh, What we're going to study is in adult class, we're actually gonna study the same thing as the children, although in a fuller or more richer way. And that way, um, parents can stay for Bible class and they'll actually be learning the same thing as their children with Mrs. Kipp in Sunday school. And then the two can, you can compliment each other and talk about it later in the day. So today uh, we begin our study, it's actually, It's on the liturgy, what we do each week, but it's by way of the scriptures. So we look at uh, the genealogy of Seth, um, who is the son of Adam and Eve. So we'll be looking at that. Our first hymn today is uh, a new hymn to us, new tune, new text. It's written by a pastor serving at Bay City, um, Michigan, Bay City, Michigan, Stephen Starkey. But it's perfect for our gospel text today. So I thought we'd uh, try to learn it. But like any new song, Sometimes you have to sing the thing a few, sing or hear the thing a few times before you can even sing along, right? I think it's easy enough to sing, um, but uh, you can be the judge on that. So I uh, encourage you to turn to it if you can read music, because that might help you too. 736, otherwise you can follow along on the screen. Consider how the birds above.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant and save the son of your maid servant. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Good will from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father, your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. To you, all soul begotten, the Father, Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Receive our heartfelt cry. seated at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy, you only are the Lord. Forever and forever be worshipped and adored. You with the Holy Spirit, alone our Lord most high. In God the Father's glory, amen, our glad reply. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, we implore you, let your continual pity cleanse and defend your church. And because she cannot continue in safety without your aid, preserve her evermore by your help and goodness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 15th Sunday after Trinity is from 1 Kings chapter 17. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterward make something for yourself 
and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked is to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations, praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever, Amen. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The epistles from Galatians chapters 5 and 6. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, 
and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor, for each one will have to bear his own load. One who has taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever one sows, that he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Alleluia. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our common Christian faith and show love for one another by confessing together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty,
Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. You cannot control the future, and you can't change the past. The only thing you can do right now is address the moment. What has the Lord set before me to do this day? Who has the Lord given me to love and to serve today? Where has the Lord put me and given me to be right now? You can't change yesterday, and you can't determine tomorrow. When we think about the past and trying to change it, well, that's a recipe for regret and despair. If you're honest, you know you've made mistakes. You've made foolish choices. You've often elected to take the easy way out rather than the right way. You regret many of the consequences for your actions. And when you look back, your heart and mind are clouded by many thoughts of what if. Of course, that's unknowable and unanswerable. And of course, hindsight, we say, is 2020. Which means you cannot change the past, you can learn from it. You could continue to do the same thing that's yielded only failure, over and over, repeating the same mistake. But of course, that leads to insanity. Or you could be a student of history. The history of the church, the history of the world, or even of your own life story. And in so doing, you'll see that your mistakes your errors of judgment and the evil in your heart really aren't all that terribly unique. Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. The psalmist says that the heart inclines only to evil. Others have faced the same or similar situations and you can learn from them by listening to them, gaining earthly wisdom, maybe avoiding their end. And so the past is knowable, and what you do about it is up to you. But wait, actually, it's not quite that easy. Sometimes history is obscured by those who write it. Or even more often, it's rewritten to justify what we want to do in the present. And you even do that with your own history. Your recollection of events, how things transpired, it's not always accurate. It's often faulty. You remember things differently than they actually happened. You can't recall your emotions on that day, the reality of the moment, or any, even some of the insights you might have gained. Because your mind, controlled by your sinful heart, twists and shapes your memories to rationalize what you want to think, who you want to be, and what you want to do today. So even looking backward, as much as it can be known, is not without its own difficulty. But even more impossible, of course, is looking forward. No one knows what tomorrow will bring. Jesus even said that he doesn't know the day or the hour that he'll return in judgment. You spend every day, though, working for tomorrow, you probably look at the weather predictions to lay out your day or even the week. You watch the market trends to see where to invest. You make plans for growth and for expansion. You might even look 10, 20, 30 years down the pike hoping for the promotion, the success, the big turnaround, or just some sense of peace. But sometimes the signs of the future point in a different direction than where they actually end up. Life throws you a curveball. <laughs> you experience the setback. You're put back on your heels or even just fall down. Jesus today in particular warns you about the futility of trying to control the future. That doesn't mean you're striving for tomorrow, for a good tomorrow is not itself good. But there is 
no promise in this world, and certainly not even a promise from God that you'll get where you want to go. Yes, it's true, the world will tell you in its books and memes and social media videos that the only obstacle to you getting what you want is yourself. But is that really the truth? Are you the only thing that stands in the way of you being the you you want to be? And is that even really real? Can you actually be anything you want? Do anything you want? Succeed at everything you try? Or is that not, again, the futility of our human heart? Even more so, you have no promise from God of such things. Instead, he gives you to be who you are. He shows you what it is you are to want. He gives success in his way and according to his time. Therefore, all of your hopes and dreams and aspirations really cannot give you any kind of confidence. And Jesus knows this. He knows the heart's condition as well as you do, maybe even better. He knows what it means to go hungry and thirsty, to be stripped naked and thrown into prison, to be persecuted and mocked for your firmly held beliefs, to be spit upon and shamed for who you are, who God has made you, to be accused and condemned by your peers, and to be executed even by an unjust government. He knows your needs. He knows what it means to live in this world. And in the midst of all that, he provides. That was what he was speaking about today in the Sermon on the Mount when he said that, of course, look to the birds of the heaven, see how God feeds them. Or look to the lilies of the field and how God has clothed them even with more glory than that of King Solomon. So why? Wouldn't he give you what you need for today and tomorrow if he does it for the birds and for the lilies? Why do you doubt that you'll be cared for in the future by your loving father when his son Jesus promises this to you? Jesus tells you exactly why you doubt. Because your emo own emotional reaction and thoughts about your condition, they lie to you about what is really real. You look at your life and you actually tell lies about your needs, actually calling many of the things that you want needs, for example. But think about what Jesus says. He says, are you not of more value than the birds of the air? Have you forgotten that God the Father, Son, and Spirit has given you the highest rank in the entire order of creation? You. We're given dominion over every living thing, everything that moves and breathes and has its being. And also, in the hierarchy of God's love and care, you matter most to him. He's numbered the hairs of your head, even. And you were made, he says, in his own image, that is, given to be God's chosen representative in all creation. Simply forgotten. But it's not only that. In your baptism, God the Father has conformed you to the image of his son Jesus. That is to say that he's transformed you, remade you, to be once again stewards and loving neighbors of this world and of one another in the way of Jesus. You've forgotten. That's why you don't. So Jesus also says, will God not much more clothe you than the grass of the field, O you of little faith? Again, God has promised to you everything that you need for your body and life, just as he's clothed the lilies of the field. All your life and indeed the whole history of the world testifies to the fact of God's ongoing loving care for creation. Yes, we see entropy and decay all around us. That is the result of mankind's rebellion from their creator God. But even in the midst of this decay and death, God provides 
and blesses us with life. He continues to cause the sun to shine, the rain to fall, the seed to sprout, the livestock to grow and mature. He blesses his people, not just with their bodily need, but with marriage and with children and with grandchildren and great-grandchildren, continuing to provide loving, faithful stewards for one another and for all creation. Why do you doubt? If we take Jesus seriously, take him at his word, we have to admit that he is and continues to be generous and rich in blessing. Uh, but it's not that easy, is it? There's plenty to worry about. The future of your country as you know it is probably in jeopardy. The economy, despite all the assurances to the contrary, has every sign of a massive implosion and failure. You're seeing increasing assaults on the family, on the church, on all the institutions that provide social cohesion and unity. Even this Christian congregation, indeed all congregations, are reeling yet from the devastating lockdowns, with many households of our own fellowship continuing to be absent from the divine service. So we have plenty to be anxious about, even fearful. But again, Jesus tells us why we're so anxious. He tells us the source of this anxiety. He says, O oh, you of little faith. Now this isn't some kind of absent promise or empty platitude, just have more faith. He's actually begging the question. It's a rhetorical question. O oh, you of little faith, well, how do I have faith? Where does faith come from? What is needed is not more stuff, God providing more for your bodily needs, and then you'll trust him. As we know from other parables and sayings of Jesus, it doesn't matter how much you have, you'll never be satisfied. What's needed is more trust in Jesus. And today, Jesus tells you exactly where that trust comes from. Jesus tells you how this trust is built and sustained. He tells you how to remain trusting. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you. The only way to live without the constant worry, anxiety, and fear of the stuff of this life, the life in this world is to live trusting in Jesus, in his righteousness, that is his forgiveness, as it's given to you here in his kingdom. See, first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added to you. So if you're going to look at the past, look to Jesus Christ and him crucified. If you're going to look at the past, look at the cross of Calvary, where God proved once and for all his loving care for you and for all people. Jesus died not just to give you more food and drink and clothing and shoes and all the things you need for this life. He does that for you regardless of whether you believe in him or trust in him at all. But Jesus died to absolve you of your sins and he rose to destroy death forever for you. That is to say your entire past as you look to the cross is forgiven in Jesus. And if you're going to look at the future, you can see in the promise, you can see through to the promises of God. Namely, God as he's revealed himself in his word. Here in Jesus' kingdom, he constantly reminds you, assures you, that where there is forgiveness of sins, you have life, not just now, <laughs> but eternally. As you are already now saved from death, you can rest confident in the assurance of faith, knowing that God will on the last day receive you and all those who believe in, in him to eternal dwellings. Those dwellings he's already now prepared for you and for all those who love him. So if you're going to look forward, if you're going to look to a future, look to the one that he's already assured you has come to pass. 
Look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, the one who has promised to you, no matter what you experience in this life, the life to come. And then each day you can live confidently and at peace, knowing that your past is taken care of, all your sins are forgiven, and that your future is assured. <laughs> Heaven is yours. Each day you can live then without anxiety and worry, living within the home and the community and here in the congregation that he has given you. You can live each day serving your neighbor in love and without fear, or even worry about how you can provide. And you can labor diligently for all, knowing that you are God's holy instrument, his beloved image given into this world for one another. And you can rest each day confidently in Christ, in his word, in the gift of his baptism, in his body and blood given and shed for you, and in the giving of brothers and sisters together here in the congregation. All of this is going to last long after this world sees its destruction. Or as Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. He is your past and he is your promised future. So live in Christ's kingdom and in his righteousness. And then you won't be anxious because your heavenly Father knows your needs and provides everything, not just for your body, but has provided his Son for your faith and life yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Thanks be to Jesus in his holy name. Amen. You may be seated, I think. Yes, stay seated. Sorry, there's an extra stand. I invite our teachers and uh, Jennifer Ford for installation. downstairs to the front. No hurry. Everybody's patient, right? We're not getting anxious. <laughs> Do you have a free hand? All right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, uh, and I have to do all the names, Marla, Mariah, and Stefan, and Penny, there we go, and also Jennifer. Well, not quite. Jennifer's staff, but she's here to be installed, okay? Good. Um, have been properly elected and called to serve as teachers of St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church and School. This office has been established in love by the church to support the office of the holy ministry and to assist and strengthen Christian fathers and mothers in their God-given responsibility to bring up their children in the nurture and instruction of the Lord. Here are the word of God concerning this office. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Do you believe 
and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testament to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds, as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures? And do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Do you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession to be the true exposition of Holy Scripture and a correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? And do you confess that the apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small articles, the treatise on the power and primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord as they are contained in the Book of Concord are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith? Do you solemnly promise faithfully to serve God's people in the teaching ministry and in accordance with Holy Scripture and with these confessions? Yes, I promise with the help of God. Will you, trusting in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of Jesus Christ with a godly life? I will with the help of God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you have heard the confession and solemn promise of Stephen, Penny, Mariah, Marla, and Jennifer, who have been called to the office of, Jennifer, of teacher in the church. I ask you now, in the presence of God, will you receive them, show them fitting love and honor, and support them by your gifts and fervent prayer? If so, then answer, we will with the help of God. We will the Almighty and most merciful God strengthen and assist you always. Are you ready and willing to assume the work of this office? Marla, I install you as teacher of St. John in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mariah, I install you as teacher of St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church and School in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Penny, I install you as teacher of St. John in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Stephen, I install you as teacher of St. John in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I invite the congregation to stand for prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and most merciful Lord, we thank you for providing faithful men and women in your church to assist and support the office of the Holy Ministry and its work among us. Grant your Holy Spirit to Marla, Mariah, Penny, and Stephen, and adorn them with wisdom and power from on high. Incline both young and old to godliness and obedience, and let them so benefit by instruction in your Holy Word that they may serve you all their days and finally obtain eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and joy. The Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and bless and strengthen you for faithful service in his name. Amen. Amen. Before we continue, Jennifer, I don't want you to feel like you're the fifth wheel. Not the fifth wheel, probably, what would be the, the wheel that actually makes it go? She's the drive shaft. Okay, very good. So, Jennifer, I install you as secretary of St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Her, her role is critical, so thank you for that. All right, you may return to your seats. Congregation, remain standing. We'll continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh God, you have set your reign and your righteousness before us in the person of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Help us always to look to him who has saved us from our sins, constantly seeking him above all things. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you have poured out your spirit on your church that the gospel of your kingdom would be believed throughout the world. Bless the proclamation of your word by the pastors and missionaries you have sent that many would hear and believe. We especially ask your blessing upon all our teachers newly installed. Lord, in your mercy. God, our Heavenly Father, you have clothed creation in glorious dress and provide even more for our, all our needs of body and soul. Forgive us for our anxiety and worry. Help us always to look to you for every good thing, trusting that as, your loving, as our loving Heavenly Father, you will never leave us without the things we need. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Lord, you have prepared an abundance of good works in advance for us to do in Christ's name. Help us in our daily lives to work hard, pay an honest wage, and be a blessing to our employers, employees, and customers. Protect us from seeking wealth for our own sakes. Rather, teach us rightly to use all your gifts for the benefit of our neighbors. Have mercy on the unemployed that they would entrust their days and burdens to your fatherly hand. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, guard and keep our president, our governor, and all the leaders in our land, that they would rule according to your will and righteous decrees for the benefit of the citizens. Guard and keep those who serve in our armed forces and send them faithful chaplains to comfort them with the forgiveness of sins in Jesus Christ. Bring our nation to repentance for everything it celebrates that is contrary to your will, especially for encouraging and supporting the scourge of abortion and the destruction of God-pleasing marriage. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, according to your will, give power to the faint and increase the strength of the sick and afflicted. We especially pray for Marcella, Kelsey, Ron, Amanda, Dan, John, and Timothy, Janice, Sandy, Ken, Kathy, and Kay Winter. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in your many and rich blessings that you have bestowed on us, this congregation, today as we celebrate with church picnic, also with those who celebrate this week their birthday, Olivia, Dick, Matthew, Myra, and Mina, those who rejoice in their baptism, Olivia, and in their anniversary, Michelle and Michael, we ask your blessings upon all our households, especially those of Joel, Deb, Summer, Tom and Sandy, Maggie, and James. For all this, Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and relieve those who grieve the loss of their family or friends, especially Bill at the death of his wife Janice and Willis at the death of his wife Janice. Lord, in your mercy. Increase our faith, O Lord, and grant that all who come to your supper may come in repentance, seeking your forgiveness and in the unity of a true confession. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may greet one another with the peace of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and on all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth, of Lord, Heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. <laughs>